A tale of two hammers. This came from Midway. Very interesting. Look at the day on it. So Smith was still making parts for these, or is this old new school, old new stock? Um, the question is, are they still making these parts? I've heard they're not making anything for the third gens anymore. But considering this hammer spur here will fit the 4046 and the 4006 and all those type of guns, maybe they still are making it. The most of the police guns you saw back in this era were made with um bobbed hammers like this. Now, as you can see here, the um this metal piece here, which I forgot the name for it. I can't think of it right now what it's called. Um is much longer of a new hammer versus the bobbed hammer for the uh, 3913. That's because it goes in a full-size handgun. So if you punch this out, it should be able to fit. I'm not going to show that on YouTube because I still want to deal with the problems with it. Interesting message here. Not for use in 39 or 59. And this one here says, Not in use for models 39 and 59. Which of a generation back before that. Um, third gen and first gen. Excuse me, second gen and, th and first gen. All right, well, that was a little bit of work. I had to reference H.R. Funk's um, disassembly video. And um, if you YouTube S&W third generation disassembly, a bunch of videos will pop up by some other user. They've been up for about 10 years now. Those videos are very helpful in this process. This is not something that, it's not like the SIG P365 where you just drive one pin out and all the uh, and the whole firing control unit comes out. This is something that takes a little bit of patience, and it's not something that you probably want to do um, before bed or, you know, rapidly before you go somewhere. It takes some patience. So, empty. The mag that has no base play in it and no spring. Cannot hold rounds. So... You can now cock, cock the gun, and you got single action, and of course the decocker works, and you got double action. Um, I fired about three shots off in the backyard range, which is more of a test range of anything, or a can range for plinking cans and soda bottles and all that at low level. Um... I like this because in the, during the time we were transitioning when this gun came out from um, revolvers that are double action only and we didn't want people drawing with a clocked hammer. Also, this gun is more designed to be deep, deeply concealed, so um, you don't want the hammer getting in the way. But realistically, even with um, acre holsters, rubber holsters, I mean, this is more than adequate. And I don't think I'll ever have to really do this, but it's nice to have this option because it puts it on a similar similar manual of arms as my Barra 92 and my SIG P226. So you get that double that single action instantly if you need it for some rare reason.